today and we're here with Green Seagull. Big thank you for being with me today. How are you doing? Hello. We're hey. good. <laughs> if you could just start off by giving us a bit of a background to Green Seagull. Me and the other Paul uh, started it um, about four or five years ago. I think so, yeah. I can't even uh, remember. Probably. I knew Sarah from my old band, uh, The Magnetic Mind, so we asked her to join and then Ellie joined a while later on drums. Uh, and uh, we put our first album, we sent out some demo tapes and, uh, well, not demo tapes, whatever you do now, sound files. <laughs> <laughs> we sent, sent some sound files to labels and uh, Mega Dodo were a label that came in straight away and said they wanted to put it out. So we, we've done two, uh, two albums with them and three singles now. Yeah, we played many gigs around London and also in Germany a lot, yeah. We used to travel, which obviously stopped <laughs> a year ago, but you know, hopefully, yeah, we're going to get back to gigging soon. We had some, we had some nice ones lined up in, uh, in Europe uh, for last year that all got cancelled. Uh, so that was a bit of a, that was a bit of a blow because we were kind of looking forward to those because uh, it's always nice to just go somewhere and have a bit of a holiday anyway, mm. you know, um, but hopefully we can do that uh, soon. I mean, we've got the added problem of Brexit now on top of the, uh, oh yeah downtown. so it might be a while but mm. we're yeah we're going to be back to gigging soon at least we've got some dates booked in for London if they go ahead hopefully gigs will start going ahead from from well if the 21st of June if not soon after hopefully um but yeah you um, released your second album I guess in 2020 how did you find releasing that d- during the lockdown yeah it was uh quite obviously challenging not being able to do like live gigs but I mean having said that I mean we actually we were able to sell out our vinyl didn't we like within a couple of days of release there was like a limited edition I can't I think it was like 300 or something like that um, and we, we got radio play I mean we have uh, Stuart McConey and Mark Radcliffe um, they play us and uh, Gideon Co as well so, I mean, that's uh, one good thing, but obviously, you know, you can't promote your like, album. We haven't really played this album live, have we? Like, we played some of the tracks before lockdown, actually. And... I remember now, <laughs> but that's about it, yeah. We, yeah. It was great, though, because I, I think people had more time to listen to it, probably. And, yeah, yeah, well, we, was... we did have Shindig do a lockdown, a couple lockdown uh, videos for us, didn't we? We had yeah. a... One of the tracks called Aerosol. We did a lockdown video and that they promoted it for us. And Paul Nelson and Elian did some um, covers, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. What did we do already? <laughs> you did a couple of Springfields and I did one of ours, remember? Yes. I did. Oh, yeah. Paper cuts, yeah, paper cuts, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Expecting yeah. to fly from Buffalo Springfield. I didn't do anything because I just had a baby. I <laughs> 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 was also yeah, we did as well, which is kind of out there, but that, um, for Living Lure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did a good, yeah. Uh, Paul Nelson's wife is really <laughs> good at like making music videos, Camilla Nelson. <laughs> and uh yeah she's done a really good video for us and yeah it's uh, yeah and well, overall it, it was great great yeah. album uh it's a great album like and it it just uh got really a lot of positive response like and i think it's more together than the first album somehow awesome, and yeah. uh, sounds great well <laughs> self-promotion but <laughs> it is good yeah cool and was there stuff for shindig was that like live streams that you were doing yes yeah. i think yeah no, they weren't live. You recorded oh, no. them beforehand, didn't you? And then, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> you know, we haven't done any live streams. Yeah, we're just, I don't know, we don't, don't really. <laughs> it's not like our first choice of things. So we're just focusing on like writing and recording songs. And, you know, you get sort of stuck into that. And it's hard to just, you know, or suddenly like, do like, you know, practice a live set all of a sudden when you're really into writing and recording. Yeah, and plus the sound quality on live streams is hard to get, yeah, I mean, a good a one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has um, lockdown impacted your songwriting then? Definitely, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> well, it's made me write a lot more songs for a start because I've had more time, you know. So <laughs> but um, definitely the sort of songs I've written are a lot more, what well, the lyrics are dark. I mean, 
you know, while, while I think that the previous ones I've done before, they've always been quite dark lyrics, but it's just so, <laughs> it's not too depressing though. <laughs> Another dimension of doom added. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, one of them is called Dark Moon. <laughs> I'd say we've definitely done more writing than we would normally, I guess, because that's kind of the only thing you can do, you know, if, if people aren't always around or not allowed to meet up or anything you're not going to be able to rehearse the songs together or work them up as a band. So I guess for the next album, we're going to have quite a lot of songs to pick from before we, you know, before we decide which ones we're going to work up. Being able as well to record a bit, you know, and uh, uh, because there's a, we have a studio in, in Hackney, so we've been able to meet because it's a professional space, right? So... <laughs> it's been good, yeah. So we've been able to work on songs together in, in spite of the lockdown as well and just uh, yeah. record demos just to, you know, to see arrangements and how they would sound like. And it's good. It's good practice and it's fun, you know. Oh, yeah, it's, it's our equivalent <laughs> of getting to go to the pub to see your mates. Like, although <laughs> not like, you know, as many mates, you might bother. <laughs> Not boasting about how many mates I've got, <laughs> but you know it gets really good to see them. It's like you know, music is a therapy, and I especially need need it at the moment. Anyway, and you know we're quite lucky that we get to do this, really, aren't we? Oh yeah, there's less pressure as well to uh, mm -hmm. have something ready at the moment, so it's it's kind of good for experimentation. It's okay. great, you know. We can experiment with our haircuts as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Just let it grow. I know. You don't have to worry about dressing up and putting makeup on. You know? <laughs> Over then for Zoom videos, of course. <laughs> Best not add anything other than pajamas on for a few days. <laughs> Generally, that's true, but not. To, I have actually been dressed this week a bit. <laughs> Harry Nielsen look. <laughs> <laughs> Corner of the market with some like rock and roll loungewear. <laughs> <laughs> Green single pyjamas. Next on. This might be how we make our first million, guys. <laughs> Your top moments that you have as a band. We definitely hearing our music on the radio to me. It's like, uh, it really cheered me up last year because they, they played uh, This Will, a, a song I wrote like on the radio, and it really cheered me up. Like was was part of the um, Radcliffe and McConey breakfast blend, and I believe they played. Uh, it was like Jefferson Airplane, and then we were sandwiched in between with um, Nancy Sinatra and Lee Hazelwood. Like I think it was like oh, some Velvet Warning. No, it was like yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Getting to play in Europe as well has been great fun. We've always gone down quite well in Germany, uh, yeah. so getting to. Getting to see all these places, just being, you know, because you might not have gone on holiday there, but then you get to see them. You know, it's, it's maybe your only chance to go and see what Stuttgart is like, or Cologne, you know. And they work hard and party hard, like it's true. I mean, it's very, it's very well organized. It's, I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but it's kind of true and it's so friendly there. And you just start gigging at like 11 and you party all night. Like, it's, yeah, almost and they treat you much better than in London actually somehow yeah yeah I'd say playing with the seeds as well was pretty that was a oh. pretty cool gig wasn't it just because they were just like really really nice like band of people that like they're the seeds and their sort of gang like, really good party wasn't it <laughs> yeah and and to hear uh songs we recorded even you know it's great when it's all done. Like I was really happy to hear the album finished and I, I thought like it, it really rolled well. And I was, you know, I was surprised because we kind of rushed uh, doing this album because uh, Sarah was going to have the baby. So we had to like hurry up to, yeah. to finish recording, <laughs> which was a blessing in disguise as well, because, you know, it was good to be fast, you know, getting together. I was just thinking today about how um, right at the end of my pregnancy, I started well, I started losing lung capacity. And also um, I started, I got a pain, my, my hands swelled swell up. So I couldn't actually play properly. I was playing in pain. And I think it was that, you know, dead and gone. We had to like uh, re-record it because it was too fast, wasn't it? And I was playing that in pain, like just, uh, you know, <laughs> hoping that the takes, you would just get a take. And I couldn't sing 
as well as like because I couldn't breathe. <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> I to sit down in the the vocal booth. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it was quite a heavy going uh, recording that album for me anyway. <laughs> it got heavier as it went on. Yeah, no, it literally heavy, yeah. <laughs> but you, it doesn't sound like bad at all on the record, which is good. It's, uh... But no, our, our top moments are definitely in the recording studio because I, I love it. it. Even though I kept falling asleep all the time with the last, you know, usually I love the whole mixing process and getting creative ideas about, you know, oh, let's try this this way. Or let's yeah, we have to, to salute our producer as well, yeah. Seb, Sebai. Yeah, he's my, he's my partner, Seb. Um, so, yeah, we're quite lucky because his studio, Sausage Studios, is uh, just next door to our rehearsal room. So um, it's like we don't have to go very far to do recording and yeah, he's recorded like everything we've done so far. So we're pretty lucky there, aren't we? Yeah. And, where we're at. <clears throat> and he helps us out as well with a lot of suggestions. Yeah, he's kind of like, yeah, the fifth member really, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth seagull. Yeah, he is. <laughs> It's great because he's into dub and lots of different things as well. So he, he loves to put effects on it and he's got like, yeah, yeah. different ideas. But it, yeah, you it know. makes it quite psychedelic, really, all the, the dub effects yeah. he uses, like, you know. Yeah, well, I mean, they've got a lot of really cool toys in there. They've got like the space echo and the plate reverb and this big desk and yeah. all, all these kind of things you can use to add fairy dust, you know. And so it's always always fun to go in there and try something new out. It always feels like you're kind of a kid in a toy shop because there's so much good gear in there, like guitars and keyboards and just yeah. quite like rare stuff as well. It's very good. The studio belongs to Nick McCarthy, used to be in Franz Ferdinand. Like, he's the, the guitarist and he left, I don't know, about five years ago, but... Yeah, him and Seb have been friends for years and uh, they, they work together now on like various different projects. But yeah, we, we meanwhile, yeah, we're just really lucky. We get to like, I get to play on all Nick's like vintage like synths and, you know, vintage organs. Got a lo lovely filler corder in there and it's like called Optigon, which is really cool, which we've used on one of our songs. What what was it? Uh, Simeon Brown, wasn't it? It was like we did like a flute Mellotron sounding thing with the Optigon, didn't we? Well, Optigons, uh, it plays these sort of uh, plastic discs, basically, that play a loop of the various notes, so you play them with the keyboard. But it's actually like, it's optical, so it's like it's printed onto the onto the sheet and it kind of spins around. Yeah, it's quite a, yeah, it's quite a weird contraption. Yeah, it's just like a lo-fi Mellotron, but like, it's got some odd sounds, I think it's excellent, and it yeah. must be very rare, I don't know anyone else who's ever. The problem is it goes out of tune, doesn't it? So you have to try and get a tape before it goes out of tune. <laughs> yeah, <it's... laughs> oh, cool. And um, you mentioned uh, playing with the uh, seeds. When when did you play with the seeds? It was <laughs> eight, April 2019, I remember it clearly. <laughs> <laughs> because then you, yeah. Because of other reasons. <laughs> Not about the conception of my kid. Okay, is it? I just know it's just things <laughs> happen in that month. Bad day, bad night. <laughs> the seed was planted. So. <laughs> yeah. No, it's probably May. Seagull <laughs> 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 <Steagle> facts. <laughs> I don't know how we can follow that. <laughs> um, yeah, how was supporting? How was supporting the seeds? Mm. It was Every interesting. It wasn't great because we had some technical problems. I borrowed my friend Farfisa and so did Daryl of the Seeds. And that Farfisa was <laughs> experiencing some issues and also a lead went wrong. But other than that, it was it was just a really, re we played at the 229 venue for our Bailey New, New Untouchables, um, you know, and it was, yeah, it's a really cool gig. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it went well. And you met your keyboard hero as well. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, lo I love Daryl. I think uh, he's uh, he's right up there with like some some of the great keyboard players, you know. 
yeah, it was fun. Good guys, uh, fun guys, nice guys as well. Like great. Cool. And now, what's your plans for the rest of this year? Ah, well, we do have some gigs booked now, which we'll be announcing soon. Um, are we allowed to announce the one with you? No. <laughs> Got what no. one of those with you? Yeah. Um, and yeah, we we will announce them soon. Um, we're just going to carry on writing and recording demos for the time being. And yeah, just so it's about having pleasure first, I think, you know, and, and yeah, see what new kind of songs we can write and yeah. find new ways of working together. Yeah. Yeah, we're just working on a new album, really, aren't we? So. I mean, I think the next few gigs are going to definitely be in London. So I just think out of town gigs are going to be a little while away yet. We are it. working on one in Leicester, but it probably won't happen till not right at the end of the year. And we hope it happens because it's a support, supporting a cool band, a cool new band. That's what I said. <laughs> cool. So some exciting stuff then, hopefully. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and if we can play, it's better, obviously, if we can do gigs, but who knows, you know, so it's better. We just got to yeah keep writing and mm -hmm. yeah sharing some love <laughs> cool um yeah well thanks very much guys thanks for coming in to talk to me that was really cool thank you thank you thanks Cheers, a big thank you again to Green Seagull. And as always, I will leave the music just in the links below. So do go and check them out, brilliant band. And before you do, make sure you subscribe to our channel. We've got a lot more interviews and more to come.